After last month's devastating fire at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, leading stonemasons offered a warning. Think carefully about reconstruction or risk substandard work. Special correspondent Malcolm Brabant visits the cathedral in the English city of York to see how the artisans there rebuilt after a fire in 1984. This report is part of our arts and culture series, Canvas. Like Notre Dame, York Minster has dominated the landscape for centuries. It has similar architectural characteristics and it offers the hope of recovery from the inferno. In July 1984, it was a very hot summer and in the early hours of the morning there was an electrical storm which it's believed struck the minster and set up a fire smouldering in the roof and because we have both a timber roof and a timber vault here in York the fire spread into the vault and of course ran the risk of affecting the whole building. Sarah Brown heads the trust which cares for stained glass. She's looking up at the now restored vault or inner roof of the wing that was gutted. York's glaziers have unique experience of restoring fire-damaged glass and their services have been offered to Notre Dame. Glass is susceptible to extreme heat and it's susceptible to rapid cooling. In a fire situation, it's cooling rapidly, particularly if gallons and gallons of water are being poured over the structure, which obviously is the case both here and in Paris. And this causes a kind of thermal shock. So although the windows appear for the most part to be surviving in the windows, close up you will probably see lots of micro cracks in the glass which make it now vulnerable to mechanical damage, to stresses and strains, high winds, etc. York has a team of stonemasons working constantly to replace crumbling elements of the minster. They're led by John David. He was at the fire in 1984 and helped to rescue treasures before the blazing roof was brought down deliberately to stop the flames from spreading to the main body of the minster. What we have now and what we learnt from the fire was we, we compartmentalised all the roofs in the minster. So now, and they're fireproofing, um, so if a fire breaks out anywhere, um, it, it can easily, well, reasonably well be contained if, if, it's, uh, if the fire people get here quick enough. Although it looks like stone, the vault of the restored wing is wooden and therefore combustible. But there is no sprinkler system in place because John David says the volume of water involved would damage the building's fabric. He believes the French should follow York Minster's lead. State-of-the-art alarms and smoke detectors, flame detectors, these are the sort of things that they need. Um, plus, uh, breaking the roof off in separate areas and have what you have is actually a, um, a map in a control room somewhere in, in the cathedral which shows if the alarm goes off in a certain area you know exactly where they come and also the fire service as in York the fire service regularly come to do a practice. York is monitoring the debate in France about the nature of Notre Dame's restoration should it be true to its medieval origins or something modern Canon Michael Smith is a traditionalist. I think we have to acknowledge that places like here and places like Notre Dame are actually repositories of prayer. They hold the memory, they hold the joys and the sorrows, the tears and the laughter, the questions, the doubts, the affirmations of faith of generations of people. Although York's prevailing attitude towards restoration is conservative, Vignettes of modernity exist. In the roof timbers, there's an image of the moon landing. Harriet Pace is creating a replacement grotesque, which is like a gargoyle, except it doesn't have a water spout. And the inspiration for the face is her late father, a sculptor. The original had a high collar and a hood and a cloak. So I copied those as a reference points and decided to decide to do a doctor. But the face I decided to do with my dad just purely because I wanted to carry on like his skills and then put them into the stonework and then just have him as a memory on the side of the cathedral. But that's about as modern as it gets in York. 
John David fears the French will abandon traditional materials and craft skills such as these in order to fulfil President Macron's pledge to restore Notre Dame in five years. It's not going to be achievable um, without any sort of very poor, poor workmanship or poor quality. And I, I hope he will think again. These cathedrals are above politics, They're for the people. There's no way that it could be done in five years with care and proper consideration to the building. So far, the amount that's been pledged to restore Notre Dame is close to a billion dollars. Most of this money is potentially going to come from French billionaires or corporations. Now, these apparent acts of philanthropy have been condemned around the world by people who believe that the potential donors are just trying to build their own legacy or to gain tax advantages. They've been criticised for rescuing a building but not looking after people in need. Now, this county here, Yorkshire, is renowned in Britain for being a place for for plain speaking and common sense. So what's the Yorkshire view of the ethics of this issue? As always, these things are not uh, either or, but both hand. I'm always cautious about judging people's motives. Um, it may well be that we can have doubts about them, but people are often more generous than we realise, and I wouldn't want to be too judgmental about that. Canon Adrian Botwright has recently retired after three decades as pastor of a large Yorkshire parish. Yes, a lot of money would be needed to, to rebuild Notre Dame, but perhaps we shouldn't always judge things by the amount of money that they take. The value is beyond just the amount of money that's spent on them. And I think I'd argue that uh, for a nation that is lost, as this country certainly has and arguably many countries in Europe have, lost a sense of purpose, a lost a sense of meaning and significance, the role that the building like that plays is colossal. The Minster's canon Michael Smith believes that perhaps 10% of donations towards Notre Dame should go to good causes. I think we impoverish the whole of society if we don't make beautiful things. I think art is important, beautiful places, beautiful spaces are really, really important. That's not to say that the people who sleep in our doorways aren't important, they're just as important, probably more, they're, well, they're more important but we have to care for them, but we also have to have beautiful places where people can come and uh, think and be challenged and uh, uh, connect with the big questions of life. And that's what buildings like this do to people. In the Minster's experience, it'll take at least a year to evaluate Notre Dame's restoration needs. The French should know that every move will be closely scrutinised here in Northern England. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant in York. Today, we are debuting Canvas Online, our brand new website for arts and culture stories from the NewsHour and from your local PBS stations around the country. Explore now at artscanvas.org and join our Facebook community dedicated to conversations around art in all its forms. That's at facebook.com slash groups slash NewsHour Arts.